the inaugural. Wow. Hey, hey, I think we are live. Hello, everybody. Justin Stoddard here of the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. Super excited to solve this problem. Um, as I meet and work with agents every day, oftentimes the question is, Justin, I know I need to be creating content. As a real estate agent, I get that uh, this is an important component of my business, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to share. Um, and so I've, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be, be friends with and connected with um, a really a nationally acclaimed video influencer. Um, many of you know him as a local real estate agent as well and the voice of Newberg, uh, Mr. Brandon Porter. Uh, Brandon, thanks for being on the show, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. I, uh, I always enjoy spending time with you. I always learn so much. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know who Brandon is, again, he's a real estate agent in Newburgh. Um, you can find the Brandon Porter Show um, on Facebook. Um, he was recently awarded uh, for 2018 the Tom Ferry and Bomb Bomb Video Influencer Award. Uh, so this guy's like totally legit. And he's really become, uh, I like to say, uh, the, the digital mayor uh, of Newburgh. His, uh, his intentions are to, to really be a voice for Newburgh. And uh, Brandon, I, uh, I'm excited to have you share some things that I think are gonna help some people get unstuck. The one thing I don't want people to think is that by watching your content that they actually get overwhelmed and they start to do less because your quality is so good. <laughs> uh, so that's not the intent of today's show is that you need to be Brandon to show up in this space because you don't. Would you agree, Brandon? I absolutely agree with that. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the filmmaking process is as much a hobby for me as it is a, a tool that I use to build my business. So I put a little bit more into it than the average realtor would need to do in order to be successful with it. Okay, very good. So obviously, yeah, you've taken it to another level, um, but our intent, um, now for some, they may wanna do that. And I know you actually uh, are getting uh, questions and, and um, requests from, from uh, agents around the country. Can I come shadow you? Um, for a couple of days and I'll pay you money to do that. Right. Um, so, th you know, there may be agents because again, this is going to be broadcast um, nationwide. You know, there may be agents from other areas that look at your stuff and be like, dang, um, I'd love to spend a few days with you, uh, Brandon. And it's, it's, it's worth the time for me to do that. So again, there may be some that are listening in that want to do that, but really the problem that we want to solve is for those that aren't even quite there yet. But for, you know, for those that are like, man, I know I need to post, I do occasionally, but, I, but when I go to post and share stuff and create content, I don't know what people want to hear. So Brandon, how did you, um, how would you recommend that an agent? Again, we're going to keep this very brief, very tactical. What would an agent do today um, to get unstuck when it comes to what kind of content they should be sharing? Yeah, I think that by now, most of us uh, know that we need to be on social media and have a presence there because that is where the attention of our uh, future clients are. You know, the uh, NAR just did a survey of buyers and sellers, and they found that 80% of buyers want to work with a realtor who uses video. And 85% of sellers want to work with a realtor who uses video. Uh, so, interesting. yeah, it is interesting. And it's more interesting to me that the buyers would really care. But I think that it just goes to show that that is what people are becoming accustomed to and they look at that as um, a necessity for the agent that they work with. So given that we need to be on social media using video, um, but like you said, it is difficult to know where to start because there's a lot to it. Um, so I'll just share like how I got started with it and uh, through that explain how you can get started as well or how other realtors could get started as well. Um, I began by looking at who my target audience was. So that include that is basically like who my ideal clients are that I would like to work with. Um, I looked at who they were as a person um, or who they are as a you know as a family and where they live. So I knew that I wanted to build my business in Newburgh. I live here. I own a home here. I'm really passionate about this town and want to make a difference here. Um, so I knew that I wanted to build my business here in Newburgh. I also started looking at like just who I enjoy being around. And those are people who, you know, are families growing because I myself have two kids and they're growing family. Um, so I looked at like people who currently own a home. They have a couple kids. Maybe there's a third on the way and they want to move up. Right. So they have a home to sell, home to buy. And they participate in Northwest culture, you know, micro brews, backyard chickens, that sort of stuff. Um, so those are the people I enjoy being around. So then from there, I started looking at what 
content should I create that would be interesting to those people? Um, so I started looking about, well, obviously I want to make content about Newberg if that's where I want to build my business. And then how can I make content that's designed to be interesting to those folks? Um, so if I were just starting over again, that's exactly where I would start is I would look at who do I like to work with? And for you know other people watching, that could be empty nesters who are going to be downsizing. That could be you know, millennials or first time buyers that could be, you know, investors, what have you, uh, whoever it is that you enjoy working with most, start thinking about what makes those people tick and how can you build content around that? Love it. So where do I want to work? Who are the people that I want to serve? Right. I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest um, problems that I see people facing is they're trying to be open to everybody, right? I'm open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to anybody. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I think there's detriment in that because you never actually serve anybody really well. Right. Um, and, 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 and when you, and I'm just talking about time, but even about um, the, the, the persona, right? The, the person of, of who you're trying to serve, the more clear you can get on what this person is, um, where they live, what their concerns are, the more clearly you then can, can put out content that's actually relevant to them. Would you agree? I, I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good and stuff. I mean, for me, it's like Newberg was a, an integral part of, of uh, my story, the people that I want to serve because I've fallen in love with this town and want to make it better. For other people, it might not be necessarily tied to a geographical town or city in the Portland metro area or, I mean, that's where we are. But if people from other uh, states are watching this, um, it could be a group that you're passionate about. Like maybe you love cycling and you want to serve other cyclists. So how can you make content that speaks to those folks? Interesting. It could be, and, and I agree with you. I think the best form of marketing is when it's so natural for you that you don't have to be inauthentic. You don't have to be somebody else when you put your business hat on. Mm -hmm. Like, especially with real estate, it's just because you're serving the general public that whatever you love to do, whether it's, it's volunteer, whether it's golf, like you said, whether it's hike, bike, go be that put out content that's relevant to that, that also ties in real estate and you'll you'll find your people, you find your audience. Absolutely. Uh, I love it, so good, Brandon. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, tell me if, uh, on on just a quick note, and I'm, I'm gonna, I know some people kind of get stuck on the on the equipment side of things. Like, do I need to, like, I'll, I'm gonna start doing content as soon as I can afford a $2,500 camera mm. or a $1,500 camera. Um, tell us really quickly your best advice for somebody that's having those conversations or having those, that like that narrative that's keeping them from doing it. And then maybe you can even share a few links um, with me that I'll post in show notes uh, that can guide people to something if they need to buy anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that is a big concern. I talk to people and they're like, well, I need the fancy camera, the fancy lights and whatnot. I mean, this stuff that I've invested in as I've decided to really commit to this, um, this is the camera that I use right here. It's a Canon 60. Uh, really fancy setup, but you really don't need it to get started. I started with a, you know, a much lower end DSLR just to get my feet wet. And as it made sense, I invested in gear over time. Ultimately, uh, the phone, the camera on your phone is plenty good to get going. Um, my one tip there is that because the sensor is so small, it needs a lot of light. So if you just be cognizant of when you go to film that you are in a well-lit area, maybe you get close to a window um, or a lamp on your desk, you know, something like that. Make sure that you're really well lit, otherwise it's gonna come across really grainy and whatnot. More important than video quality is audio quality. Um, if, I, if, if there's bad video, I can forgive that if the content's really good. Um, if I can't hear what you're saying, then I'm just gonna move to the next video. Yeah. So I would strongly encourage you to invest in a microphone. Again, doesn't have to be expensive to get started. I have, I mean, right now I'm just using my uh, ear earbuds or whatever these things are called. But there's this guy right here is a lavalier mic, and it plugs directly into your phone. This was 22 bucks on Amazon. Um, the company Rode, R-O-D-E, makes a little shotgun microphone that you can attach to uh, your phone. 
and that's a very directional. So it focuses kind of like towards you and then minimizes the sound that it picks up around the room. So be in a quiet space when you film, one. Two, just have a, a microphone like this or that Rode one I think is like 60 or 75 bucks. You could also do like a little ring light or something. They make little guys that are like 10 bucks that attach to your phone. That's really enough to get started. Awesome, man. Really simple stuff. If you'd put some, uh, send me some some links to that stuff uh, so that people that, that feel like they want to invest less than 50 bucks to up their game a little bit. Other than that, I agree with you. What we carry around in our pockets is better than any filming dev, you know, device that they used up until the 80s probably. I mean, it's just Absolutely. you know fantastic. So um, it's, it's good enough to get started. I totally agree. So uh, anyway, want to thank you so much for your time, uh, for, for pouring in to um, those members of the Think Bigger Real Estate group. Um, I'm excited uh, for uh, having people like you that are willing to not only do great things, but then also open your playbook and say, here's what I do, share it. So you're, you're kind of the ideal person that we want to be learning from. So thank you and uh, excited to, to see your, continue, your, your continued rise uh, in the video influencer and, and real estate space. And uh, just appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Thank you, Justin. It's an honor. Yep. All right, buddy. All right. Take care. Yeah, buddy. Talk to you later. See you.